Hey, what's up everybody? Video 44 coming at you with another video. All right, so things just got interesting around Lakerland uh, because from what I understand, the Lakers are monitor monitoring the Miles Bridges situation. From what I understand, there's been either a settlement reached or some type of conclusion to his situation. I think he got some years probation for the conclusion of that. I think that's how that went. So whatever the case may be, he's now uh, available to, to regain his... Uh, his free agency process, which is restricted, which means that the Hornets would be able to match anything uh, that he signs. However, if somebody were to do a sign and trade, then suddenly you have a situation where uh, you don't have to worry about that. And so that's where the Lakers come in. You look at the Lakers Russell Westbrook contract um, at $47 million in the way he's been playing lately, which would probably be an addition to the Hornets team. Uh, who's probably tanking right now, and LaMelo Ball's had some injury issues and things like that, so they could afford to bring in Russell Westbrook's expiring contract, possibly tank it out for the rest of the season, and then hopefully get Webb Banyama or somebody like that to pair next to LaMelo Ball and then have $47 million worth of cap space to maneuver with. Um, so they've all they've long wanted that contract, but they really didn't have anything the Lakers wanted. The thing about it is Miles Bridges is a player who's basically – got this entire felony situation in place so it looked like his career was gonna uh not be able to take place anymore but given the fact things are as they are now he has to get back on the team but it looks like you know charlotte is probably ready to move on they got their situation as is and although he was a player they would love to have had back at this point i don't think they're going to pay him the salary that he was looking to have and so if he's not going to get his salary you know it might be in his best interest to move on and just see greener pastures in general after what he's been through. Uh, so here's his free agency process. Now, basically, even though he's a restricted free agent, it's a unique situation because now he has an opportunity to maybe even go to a team like the Lakers who would allow him to basically spread his wings and, and, and be able to be a part of a, a, a winning situation, which he would immediately help if he comes in in shape and plays as the way he played last year. Uh, yeah, he would immediately help the Lakers. Um, with at a discount at a discounted price uh so i don't know if that would be something the, the charlotte hornets would would be willing to do uh but looking at the lakers two draft picks and considering the fact that miles bridges is dis disgraced uh if you can turn him into two first round draft picks and expiring contract for of a of a player who's improving in russell westbrook and somebody who'll be coming off the books at that extreme amount at the end of the season if you're michael jordan you kind of see that as a win you got to see that as a win um, the Lakers have long not wanted to take back the contracts of Gordon Hayward and Terry Rozier. But in order to make the, the, the salaries work in this situation, you would probably t throw in one of those two players. If I'm the Los Angeles Lakers, it's definitely going to be Terry Rozier. If I'm giving up two draft picks, um, I'm taking back Terry Rozier and I'm taking back Miles Bridges at a price that I can afford. Um, it makes no sense to try to pay for Miles Bridges at an exorbitant amount. Not that we have it anyway, but if you're going to give him the whole 47, you might as well just keep Russell here. I like Miles Bridges a lot, but I just have a feeling that he's going to be a hard player to trade uh, because of the situation. And not because of how well he plays. You know he's going to be great on the court, but he has had some behavioral issues. And this is not this is not somebody you want to just take a chance on if you're not certain his head is, not, is on straight. I'm just going to be honest. Um you know, it's it's a hell of an investment. He's a hell of a player. I could argue he was the most improved player in the league last year. He probably should have made an all-star team last year. That's how good he played on both sides of the floor. So he's definitely uh, somebody who, who can immediately come in and change life for the Lakers. Ain't no question about that. But the question is, what shape is he in? Um, and where's his head at? And if you're going to bring somebody to this city with, with what we got going on in L.A. and the Lakers and all this pressure and stuff, if his head ain't on straight, if his maturity level ain't right, or if he's prone to doing the stuff that he was accused of there, this is not the place to bring him to. And so I just, I look at that and I say, you know, his talent, I want on the team. This is just like Kyrie Irving, but, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, it's a different situation. But Kyrie, I believe he's a good character person, even though he has people, you know, looking at him differently in that regard. But at the end of the day, I do believe he can come in and, and, and help us win uh miles bridges is somebody i definitely think can help us win but i have more questions about him than i do Kyrie. to be honest with you even though that's that's not what the, what the media will tell you they'll compare them to be to each other but the miles situation's a bit different man 
And you guys know I had skepticism about all of that based on the timing of it all. And I, I've made videos on that. And, and I, will just, I will tell you that I had questions about that. But my questions weren't aligned with whether or not he was prone to doing something like that. It wasn't that. It was more so along the lines of, uh, was he coerced? That was more so my angle that I was coming at. So I don't, you know, I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I'm, I would never turn his talent away for what it is that we are. But the person, personalities, man, there's something to be said for personalities. And with the, with the mood that Bron's been in, with AD kind of being eh, all the time, you got Pat Bev on deck. And he's going to bring in Miles Bridges with whatever his mindset and his energy is. I am just not sure that's the move. I just am not sure. Now, if the Lakers are going to reset their timeline, um, you know, obviously, you know, you want to you want to bring Miles Bridges in, kind of help restart that. But even so, if he played like he did last year, he needs to be winning now, too. He's not he's not a rebuild kind of give me a couple years of your year of your career kind of guy he's really not so you kind of do want him in this situation based on what his what it is you think he can do for you right now but you know if you're the lakers and you, you have so so little talent obviously this is a risk you work you you can afford to make based on how little you have right now how how, how difficult it's going to be to move russell westbrook um for an amount like that in any other circumstance, I don't think you can get nothing better than that for Russell Westbrook at all, to be honest with you. Um, you know, just... Miles Bridges is a player who's probably going to make a couple all-star teams going forward, man. That's the reality of it. If he if he could put all of this behind him, his talent is it's an all-star. He's an all-star. I mean, he, he's, he's on the verge of it. He's, it, was, it was He was really, really close to it last year. I'm pretty sure he would have blew plaque blew past that this year so it's one of them type of situations where it's like yeah of course you want to bring him in the Detroit Pistons were ready to pay him almost 150 200 million dollars so obviously he's not going to be getting that kind of money right now so whatever you bring him in at is a discount even if it's 90 million 80 million he can play that up he's gonna play it up he's that good so yeah man I don't blame Rob Palenka for trying to swing for the fences and try to grab that kid at a discount that's that could be a very very big thing for for a talentless basketball squad for sure you know I, I, I've been on the record saying give me all of the troubled people give me give me primo give me bridges I'll take them all but what you got to understand about my mindset is I'm not bringing them in to play with Brian I'm bringing them in because I want them to be here when he's gone <laughs> that's exactly what I'm thinking I'm like this is going to be pieces that I can either keep or trade when the rebuilding process begins. So that's why I'm doing that. I'm not bringing them in because I think it's the greatest fit for Braun and we're going to win a championship with this mix. Nah, I'm bringing them in because this is my exit strategy. So, you know, you get as much lottery talent as possible. As I said, you got to go talk to Houston, see if they got a couple of kids. You know they got to get rid of a few of them. You got to go talk to them, talk to OKC, same thing. They got kids that they cannot keep. Those kids should have been on your team anyway. Those are picks that you should have as teams that have mortgaged your future in the Lakers and, then of course, other like the Clippers and the Nets. So, like, those teams need to be talking to those teams. Golden State, they're unhappy with their young players. We need to go get them out of there. A guy like Moses Moody, bring him to the Lakers. You know, I heard a, a asinine trade rumor about sending Anthony Davis to, uh, to the Golden State Warriors for Draymond Green and Klay Thompson. You do something like that, and you won't hear the end of it. That's all I got to say. The Lakers do something like that, and they will not hear the end of that. They will not hear the end of that. That is a no. Klay Thompson is a struggling basketball player, and Draymond Green, we know what he's been up to. We know how he's been playing. We, it, ain't, it ain't that. Anthony Davis should be able to net us some young talent. If we're going to get rid of Anthony Davis, the last thing we need to do is get older. You, if you do that... Uh, it's, it's going to be a situation where I'm going to be uh, more angry than I've probably ever been in regards to the Lakers. Maybe ever. Maybe ever. So I hope that that's not something the Lakers would actually uh, consider, and I, I doubt it is. Judging by how loud their struggles are in Golden State, nah. Anthony Davis is worth uh, four times that 
to be exact. So, just just being real. Um, yeah, that's where my head is, man. I'm excited about uh, TB. He will be officially coming back tonight. The game is in about two hours and a half, I guess, seven thirty, something like that. Uh, and so we're getting him back and Dennis Schroeder for sure. Um, so that's that's great news. Of course, we know that Max is going to be out uh, with health and safety. Um, so. We just await what the team is going to do tonight, man. Hopefully this is one of the last games where we look at like this. Hopefully we can swing for some type of fantastic value move. You know, that's what it's about. It's bringing back a significant uh, discount in some way. If you can do that, you've, you've hit a home run if you're Rob Palenka. Because everything that we've done, as I said earlier in a different video, has been to the benefit of the other side of the trade table. We've brought back things that we needed, but we've overpaid for all of it. And that's what needs to stop. So that, that's what I'm hopeful that we can, we can put it into and uh, not adhere to some of these uh, pressures that are upon us based on the fact that we're a losing team. You know what I mean? What's, what's the adjustment from losing to what? So that's my thing. Don't let anybody pressure you into thinking you're about to swing for a trade that's going to turn you into a champion. That's not realistic. So whatever we're doing, we shouldn't even be thinking about like thinking about it in that under those terms. We should be trying to build either a championship team for next season with pieces that we can help parlay to that this season, or as I said, blow it up, which is definitely the better move if you ask me. Uh, so that's what I got, man. I'm gonna try to take a nap, I'll rest my eyes a little bit before this game, and of course I'll get back to you guys seven. Well, no, that's what time the game starts seven thirty. But I will get back to you guys at uh, halftime and, of course, at the end of the game with content. So that's what I got. PDF 44. Thank you all for watching. Oh.